Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. We can all agree that the universe is expanding. Or can we? I guess that's for another video. But for now, let's say that the universe is expanding. One thing we can't seem to agree on, however, is how fast the universe is actually expanding. This video is all about that, so let's begin. The universe is expanding. It's getting larger. Hubble told us so over a hundred years ago when he saw that galaxies are moving away from us and away from each other. But that's not all, the expansion is accelerating. Further away galaxies are moving away faster than closer galaxies. Notice that this is a linear relationship. We know it as Hubble's law. Hubble was able to express the rate of expansion of the universe as the Hubble constant H0. That is equal to a galaxy's recessional velocity V, i.e. the speed it's receding from us, divided by its distance to Earth. This is probably the most important number in cosmology, as it not only tells us how fast the universe is expanding, but also the age of the universe. Hubble's original measurements gave a Hubble constant value of 500 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but more recent measurements bring the value closer to 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, so seven times smaller. Even though technology has improved, the telescopes are bigger and better and have new methods more developed to extract these measurements, the actual value of the Hubble constant is still unknown. Measuring the recessional velocity of galaxies is just one of the many ways that we can measure the rate at which the universe is expanding. And it turns out that this is a major problem. There are various other ways that we can measure H0 through things such as the distance ladder, a set of methods involving determining distances. Hubble's measurements of galaxies also fall under this category, but they are not the only things that we can measure distances for. Other things that we can measure distances to include supernova explosions and bright stars in galaxies. Different astronomical sources are used to determine different scales of distances. Some sources like globular clusters are only good for determining distance to very short um, distances, up to about 3000 light years away. Other sources like supernovae 1a can be used to make measurements up to 300 million light years away. This is why it's called a distance ladder. There are loads of different steps to different distances, close by to very far away. These kind of methods are known as late universe methods as they're based on sources from our local universe. Early universe methods instead involve the early universe, such as the CMB, the cosmic microwave background radiation, radiation left over from the early universe. The CMB is essentially a temperature map of the universe, and even though the temperature of the universe is 2.7 Kelvin, there are actually tiny fluctuations across the universe. The size of these fluctuations depends on the expansion rate of the universe, and hence can be used to constrain the Hubble constant. Late universe measurements have converged to a value close to 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but the early universe measurements are closer to 67.7 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Over the last years, with improving technology and techniques, the error bars on these measurements have decreased. However, the central values for H0 have not moved any closer together. And even though the difference seems very small, even a two kilometer per second per megaparsec discrepancy between predictions from the theory and observations implies that there could be something majorly wrong with our current understanding of our universe. Some argue that the Hubble tension calls for a new physics beyond our current standard model, the Lander CDM model. One possible solution is some modified Newtonian dynamics model, or MOND for short. We spoke about this previously in this video. Others have proposed an early dark energy model where the presence of dark energy in the early universe changes and so does its expansion history. So there's different amounts of dark energy 
in the early universe compared to right now. On the other hand, it may be that there's no tension at all, but instead we aren't accounting for uncertainties properly or some other kind of systematic. In any case, it's important that we get to the root of this problem. Without the Hubble constant, we don't know how old our universe is. We don't know the size of our universe, but more importantly, we need to make sure that everything else we think we know about the universe and the standard model is correct. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.